So a former colleague has just given an interview with ITV regarding her experience working alongside Lucy Letby, and in particular Lucy Letby's behaviour after the death of Child O. In this video I'll be covering the interview in full, and also draw your attention to the death of Child P, where a separate colleague described in court Lucy Letby's inappropriate behaviour. Lucy Letby could not wait to rush over and tell a nurse arriving for her shift that another baby had died, a former colleague has said. Abby Lever worked on the Countess of Chester's neonatal unit alongside Letby and said the nurse was quick to grab another colleague as she began her shift to inform her a triplet who had been under their care had died earlier in the day. Baby O, who was considered to be in a good condition, was murdered by Letby on the 23rd of June 2016 as she returned from a holiday in Ibiza. The nurse said once two of the triplets, babies O and P, had died, the dynamics on the ward, which had been classed as a tier 2 unit, changed. To have two babies go in one week on a level 2 unit was a bit drastic, and it did kind of make me think, well, this is a bit odd, she said. Coming from a level 3 unit initially, it was a little bit expected because we took 23 weekers. We took the more cardiac issues. Granted, it didn't happen very often. You might have three a week, but then you don't see anything for six months to a year. But to then get two 34 weekers consecutively, it was a bit alarming. She said shortly after the deaths of babies O and P, there had been rumours circulating that the consultants were bullying Lucy. I think a lot of people were wondering why Lucy was removed. Okay, so I'm just going to cut in here and share some of my thoughts on the last sentence that I read there because I know some people have heard that and thought to themselves, well, hang on a minute, it, was there some kind of bullying culture going on here? Is Lucy really the victim in all, in all of this? And what I want people to remember is that after this event, Lucy let be then filed a grievance against the hospital. And I remember sitting in court and the prosecuting barrister, Nicholas Johnson, said to Lucy let be, did you think attack was the best form of defence? And she said, I'm sorry? And he said, did you think attack was the best form of defence? And she said, well, I don't think this is me attacking anybody. This is me reacting to what's being done to me. So there was this idea that Lucy Letby was taking on this role of, I'm the person who's being persecuted here. I haven't done anything wrong. It was almost like a defence mechanism in many ways, like attacking the hospital, putting in this idea that she was a victim. And think about this from her colleague's perspective here. None of these individuals had any idea, evidentially speaking, as to what had taken place at the neonatal unit. And we're not talking about someone stealing a packet of crisps here. I mean, how likely would you be in that situation? Just put yourself in her colleague's position there. Even if you don't really know this individual, would you truly believe that a nurse, someone that you work with who seems relatively normal, would be capable of killing children? Most people wouldn't believe that, would they? They would probably side with this idea that Lucy was overworked and um, bullied by these consultants. You would probably buy into that. And it's worth bearing in mind here that we're talking about a time period before Lucy Letby had even been suspended or removed from the hospital. The police hadn't even started their investigation at this point in time. Lucy hadn't been arrested. None of the evidence had even been heard in court when people are making this assessment. So it doesn't surprise me at all that friends or colleagues or people that don't even really know Lucy would be saying, well, yeah, there were some rumours that she was being bullied because it's unthinkable. That's the whole point. The crimes are that bad, people wouldn't really buy into them straight away, would they? They'd be like, that's just crazy. No one's going to do that. Why would someone harm children? We're nurses. It would be unthinkable for a lot of people. So, as I say, just bear that in mind when we take a look at this article that someone's giving their opinion here before any evidence in this case was actually heard. Anyway, let's continue on with the article. I think a lot of people were wondering why Lucy was removed, Abby added. There were a lot of unanswered questions, and then it gets you thinking, well, actually, is the finger going to be pointed at me? You worry about what to say. But there were a couple of select people that were quite supportive of Lucy, and others just wanted to know what was going on. It changed the dynamics of the ward to a degree, because you'd perhaps have a conversation with a few people on the ward, but then if a certain person were on, then you wouldn't necessarily mention Lucy, because you didn't want to get their backs up. You ended up in two camps, but with a select few that were quite supportive of Lucy and wouldn't hear anything of it. I'd never experienced anything like that before. Abby says in the early days following Lucy's removal from the unit, 
staff were trying to work out what had happened and why. A lot of people were just wondering if it has happened, how has it happened, how have we all missed it? Everything is meant to be second checked, so how have we all missed it? Everyone was just shocked because you're just not expecting it. You come into nursing because you're a caring and loving person and you want to make a difference. There are a lot of unanswered questions. She said that most people were probably relieved when she didn't come back on the ward after she had been removed. There were still two camps once she had been charged with murder, she added. I think a lot of people, and obviously again since she had been removed there hadn't been any more, but I was only there for another year before maternity leave and there weren't any more deaths. Okay, so what stood out to me about that interview in particular is where this lady discusses the death of child O and Lucy Letby's reaction. I get the impression that Lucy Letby was quite hyped up. I don't know if excited is the right word, but it seems that when these two nurses came onto shift, she immediately pulled one to the side and couldn't wait to get that news across to her that child O had died. And it reminded me of what happened in court. I'm just going to read you a section of what took place regarding child O and child P and how I believe that this actually gives a very good indication of Lucy Letby's behaviour around that time period. Bearing in mind we were looking at triplets here. One of the triplets got removed from the hospital thankfully and two of the triplets died and in court Nicholas Johnson said you know were you trying to kill all three? Did, that, did the thought of that excite you? And he was trying to get across that the, the idea of Lucy Letby killing all three of them was something that was very appealing to her. It sort of excited her in some way. Now just take a listen to the following here. Letby is accused of murdering the newborn infant known as Child P and his triplet brother Child O on successive day shifts in June 2016. So these two events happened right next to each other basically, so they are connected. Later the consultant said she remembered another unusual event involving Letby after Child P had been pronounced dead. So again, this is a different consultant, a different doctor who is giving evidence under oath. This isn't the person that we've just listened to in this interview. It's a separate individual. She said, quote, I went to speak to the parents. Myself and Lucy Letby were there. I remember feeling I don't know how to face them or how to say this. I told them that child P was going to need a post-mortem. Staff nurse Letby was behind me. One of the things I found unusual was she was almost very animated. She was saying to the parents, do you want me to make a memory box like I did for Child O yesterday? I remember thinking, this is not a new baby. This is a dead baby. Why are you acting so excited about this? I found that very inappropriate, the way it was said. So in my opinion, you can see here an, a total correlation of Lucy Letby's behaviour regarding Child O and the following day, Child P. Very hyped up, again in my opinion here very hyped up, desperate to tell this nurse that child O had passed away. And then this sort of bizarre behaviour regarding the memory box. Oh, do you want me to make a memory box like I did yesterday for child O? Very excited. And it really stuck in this individual's mind to the point where she's actually stood up in court here and testified that it's, that it's something that stuck with her. I just found it very inappropriate. It's not a new baby. This baby's dead. Why are you acting so excited? Very, very strange. And I think this also ties in with the note, doesn't it, that Lucy Letby wrote. She addressed a note to these three triplets and one of them, thank God, was taken out of the hospital and thankfully survived. But she had written this note to triplet one, two and three. Today is your birthday, but you're not here. And I'm so sorry for that. And Nicholas Johnson said, why did you address it to all three? And she said, well, I don't know. I haven't said it out as a formal note. It's just, I've just written three names. It's, it's literally what she said. And he said, did the thought of killing all three of them excite you? And she said, absolutely not. But it makes you wonder, doesn't it, when she's writing out this note, was this a, a sort of draft sympathy note? If she did, in fact, manage to kill all three of them, was she just writing it out to see what it looked like? It's just an absolutely awful 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 situation anyway i'm going to play the interview um, for you now this just covers the bits that i haven't covered i haven't narrated from the article and this was as i say posted on the itv website she seemed quite quiet um the self to herself she's not she's not specifically someone that i really warm to um like you know i try and 
kind of be friends with everybody and you know naturally you're drawn to some people more than others and yeah she's just not someone that I kind of look to get to know I suppose. But you didn't know at the time obviously you, it's not like yeah you, it's not like you were like I don't warm to her because I think she's a malicious person you didn't have those thoughts at the time right? No I didn't have those thoughts at the time like I didn't I didn't really know her from Adam and you know like I say everybody comes into nursing because they want to care and make a difference so you were working on the ward at that time when she carried out her final two murders yeah so i worked i'm pretty sure i was on the night before and then i came back in for a night shift and the first one had gone in the day and yeah i rushed I was obviously walking onto the ward with another member of staff and she quickly rushed over as soon as we got through the door to pull the other member of staff into the kitchen because she'd been on the night before looking after the trip, one of the triplets. Um, what was she pulling that staff member over for? What, what did she...? Well, she just wanted to inform her before she arrived onto the ward, I suppose. But, yeah, I think for me, just... Like, there's obviously a camera looking at people coming into the ward, so she was obviously watching, and I think for me, yeah, obviously, you you know, for, of, as a nurse, if I was looking after that baby, I've, I'd have, you know, wanted the politeness of being informed before it being in handover, but I probably would have just let the nurse just go, <laughs> get herself together first, and then before the kind of ward meeting, just bring her in and then say, this has happened in the day. Were there any whispers amongst the nurses kind of going, Lucy Leppie's always there, why, why was she on shift again? Not initially. I think everybody's just a bit shocked and sad for the parents initially. They're the first point of thought, really. I don't think anyone thinks about thought about Lucy necessarily. I think it was about a week later she was then removed from the unit. Tell me, what was the ward like at that point? You know, there was a couple of select people that were quite supportive of Lucy and then other people that just, you know, generally just wanted to know what was going on, really. So would you say it changed the dynamics of the ward? Yeah, I suppose to a degree, because you, you'd perhaps have a conversation with a few people on the wall, but then if certain people were on that day or at night, then you wouldn't necessarily mention Lucy because you don't want to get their, their backs up. We talked about these two camps, some who thought she was innocent and some who weren't so sure. What camp did you fall in? I suppose I didn't really have a proper opinion on her because it was only a short space of time. But then, you know, I, I kind of, in this situation, I'm more factual that there is, there is a lot of evidence, years of evidence that's been collated how can they get it wrong? The management at the time in the hospital have come under a great deal of criticism because the consultants are alleging that they try to raise concerns about Lucy Letby over several months and they allege that they weren't listened to. What do you think about when you hear that? It, you, you wonder how this person got through the net. You know, you can see how it's happened because you are you know, if you're going to accuse somebody of murder, you're opening up a can of worms and you're changing someone's life. And you know, at the same time, you know, we all come into nursing to be an advocate for patients and their families. And surely that should have been the, the forefront of people's minds. It wasn't just a run of bad luck on the unit. There was a nurse who was deliberately going out of her way to kill babies on that unit. How do you feel now knowing that? I mean, obviously, my heart goes out to the families first and foremost because their lives have been ripped apart and they're never really going to get the answers, I don't think, as to what's happened and why it's happened. As always, many thanks for joining me for this video. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe down below for future content regarding this case. And very shortly, you'll be able to see the Lucy Letby playlist, which has all of the videos that I've created regarding the trial and the case of Lucy Letby all in one convenient folder. Many thanks for joining me for this video. I look forward to seeing you all again for the next one. Take care. Cheers.